So Pat, I've heard a lot about these operational dashboards. I'm kind of curious, what is it? Well, a dashboard is made up of three things. One is the base maps. As you can see here, we have a base map for our service territory. The next one is your operational layers. Your operational layers meaning your event data, for this example, work orders, customer calls. And report layers. Report layers giving you information about the overall condition of your assets. That's great. So who would use this? Well, in this example, this is designed for an operational manager for a water distribution company. And they may use this in a number of ways, but let me walk you through how they may use it in, um, on a daily basis. Okay. So, for example, he'll come in in the morning, and an operational manager basically has three things he needs to do. He needs to take a look at where his resources are, the status of the work, and how to best prioritize that work. So, in this case, we can come and go to our operational layers, bring in our customer calls, and what you'll see is you'll see them placed on the map. And what's nice is it put, puts them where the work is going, where these calls have actually come in. And they can see from this, spatially, if there's a pattern there. So you'll notice here we have an area where a number of calls coming into the system reporting low pressure. So obviously I have a, an issue down there that I need to address quickly. So by clicking on that location, it zooms me to that location and brings up information about the call itself. What's nice is you'll notice when I zoomed in, the base map has changed. In fact, you're seeing more information. So it's designed to present information at the right scale and giving the user information that help them make a better business decision. In this case, you can see the low pressure is occurring right next to a school. So from an operational point of view, they'll want to take this and elevate this to a high priority because they don't want to have to cancel school because they can't serve water. So the next step you might want to do is try to understand how to best figure out what caused these low pressure calls from coming in. So what we'll do is we'll bring in our work orders, because many times when work has occurred in the field, they may actually have been resolved. So in this case, you can see that there's a work order that has occurred near the same area that's reporting low pressure. And in fact, you'll notice in this example that there was a main break. It's been reported earlier in the day, and it's been resolved. Okay. So yeah, now the operational manager knows quickly what was maybe causing the low pressure in this case, there was a main, light, main break, excuse me. They've gone out and resolved it, and now they know what to do. So that's just one example. Um, but if the manager wanted to know more information about the, the asset, you can actually come up and hit the Identify toolbar and interrogate the main itself. So now what you'll see is information about that particular main, the gear that was installed, maybe some information that will indicate whether or not he wants to go out and replace that main. And if there's any images associated to that name, it would pop up in the same viewer. So I was able to quickly identify uh, the calls that have come in, the work where people um, deploy, and also the history of the asset itself. So that's just one example of how they may use the viewer. But a lot of times, managers also have to understand how their systems operate. So in this case, I can come up to my bookmark, and let's go back to the full view. And what you're seeing now is the whole distribution area broken up into districts, individual districts. So the manager may want to understand actually the number of assets they have in those districts. So going up to my report layers, I can come in, I can look at my inventory reports and my administration layers. In this case, I'll look at my engineering area report. What that does, it brings up a view of broken down by district, uh, the asset, the asset inventory. So in this example, we can see the number of mains, valves, hydrants and then also the consumption for each individual district. What makes this powerful is the fact that it's hitting the database and, re and re representing it in real time. In other words, as the database gets updated, this information is automatically updated. Oh. Yeah, so it's pretty powerful in the fact that you can have these reports that are dynamic, not these static paper maps. Another report that managers are often very interested in, obviously, where are you gonna be spending your money? So, what we want to do is we want to pull up all of our capital improvement projects. So what we're looking at now on the screen is you can see the geographic area of where those capital improvements are going. But what if I want to pull up information about how the funding and the expenditures are going to occur in this next five years? So I can come to my charting widget, come in, select uh, the projects that I'm interested in. Then you'll notice here I can see a breakdown of the funding and expenditures for each project. Well, that's fantastic, Pat. Yeah, it's pretty nice because you can quickly see how you can take that information and summarize that very quickly and understand it even more importantly in a chart. You know, that's more visual than just seeing it uh, individually in a record. Yeah.
So this is, this is this is great, Pat. Now, if I want to do this myself with my own data and my location, where would, where would I start? Well, that's a good question. What you'll do is you'll download this template from the Resource Center. There will be a configuration file in that, a zip file that you'll want to read because it does a couple of things. One, it tells you how to set up the application as well as configure it. These templates were designed so that you can take them and apply them to your workflows and to your business. So the idea is that we want to give people the power to take these templates and apply them to their own individual workflow. Great, thanks, Pat. Sure.